Hello, my dear students, and welcome to 219 Prose. By the end of the lesson, you will be able to first identify the differences, the different types of a prose, identify types of characters, identify types of settings. So these are the three, the three main goals that you will be able to achieve at the end of this lesson. The definition of a prose. A prose is a form of language that has no formal metrical structure. It applies a natural flow of speech and ordinary grammatical structure rather than the rhythmic structure such as in the case of traditional poetry. So as you see here, the, uh, the prose is just following a very ordinary grammatical structure and reflect the everyday speech of people. Normal everyday speech is spoken in a prose and most people think and write in a prose form. Prose comprises of full grammatical sentences which consists of paragraphs, foregoes aesthetic, appeal in favor of a clear and straightforward language. So the language of a prose is always straightforward and clear. It can be said to be the most reflective of conversational speech. So again, it just reflects the conversational speech, the everyday speech with a very, very simple and ordinary language. It can be said to be the most reflected of, conversa uh, of conversational speech, as I said. Some works of a prose do have versification and blend of the two form that is called prose. So if we have two form, we call it prose poetry. So what are the common types of prose? What are the common types of prose? Number one, we have the non-fictional prose. From the title, what can you say, for example, about the non-fictional prose? It is actually a literary work that is mainly based on fact rather than the imagination. Those may contain fictional elements in certain cases. So the non-fictional prose doesn't based on the imagination. It just reflects the facts. For example, as you see here, we have the essay, the biography, letter, diary, journal, account, and the autobiography, arguments, and complaint. All of them just uh, follow the uh, facts with no imagination in it. So this is the non-fictional prose. The second one, the fictional prose. So it is the opposite. The fictional prose is a literary work that is wholly and partly imagined or theoretical. So it is the opposite of the, non the non-fictional prose because it is based on our imagination. For example, the shortest stories, novellas, fable and fairy tales, and the myths, all of them uh, are considered as fictional prose. So the novels that you read every day, we can we consider them as fictional prose. We can't say they are non-fictional because they are wholly based on something that is not real and based on our imagination. The third one is the heroic prose. What is the heroic prose? What's the meaning of, of heroic or a hero? Let us read and see. It is a literary work that may be written down or recited and which employs many of the formalic expressions found in oral tradition, like the legends and tales. Also in our culture, we have uh, legends and tales that reflect the, the heroic prose. Okay, the fourth one, prose poetry. We mentioned that in the uh, previous definition, a literary work that exhibits poetic quality using emotional effects and heightened imaginary but which are written in prose instead of verses. Okay? Now we will see two examples of a prose. Example one, it was a bright warm day in April and the clock were striking 10. And the second one, whether I shall turn out to be the best version of myself or whether I turned out to be the worst 
these shall be our judge. So what kind of a prose this that you see here? Both of them are uh, actually fictional prose. One of them is related to the biography and the other one is more like poetic. So what is the meaning of characters? Let us find out. A character is an imaginary person who acts, appears, or is referred to in a, in a literary work. Okay? Now let us see the main types of characters. We have, as you see here, four types of characters. The first one is the major or the main character. The second, the minor character. Third, flat character and finally round character. Now let us find out the meaning of each one. The major character. The major character is the central character that receives most attention. So the major or the main character is the one that receives the most attention in our prose. Minor character. What do we mean by the minor character? Marginal or secondary character that receives less attention. So the more attention will go, uh, the more attention will be where? To the major character, while the minor character will receive less attention. The third one, flat character. Relatively simple and two-dimensional character with few traits and predictable behavior or responses. So this uh, character have what? This character ha uh, has what? Two dimensional characters and few traits that are predictable. Okay? The round character. Round character is complex, multi faceted character capable of surprising the readers. So the one that can surprise the reader, we call him or her the round character. And finally, static character. Static character do not change while the dynamic characters do. So the, stati the static characters are that just remain without any change. So now what are the clues and cues to characters? Let us find out. Describing characters' appearance, describing general behavior, accent, dialect, the tone they use in different situations, Things they say, things other characters say about a character. A character's different roles can be mother, friend, neighbor, different kind of relationship, background, like what? Like the age, gender, race, religion, education, and occupation. Personal values and beliefs habits and hobbies. Now, what is the settings of the prose? Settings refers to the general locale and the historical time in which a story occurs. Setting can function as a way of revealing characters, a means of reinforcing theme. So these are the main two functions of setting, to reveal the characters or to reinforce the theme. Time setting. What is the time setting? Time setting is historical period, time of year or time of a day create the atmosphere and the story. So I guess this is clear. How about the social setting? The social setting is what? Is the social environment in which a st in which a story takes a place now let's read a short example of a prose then we will look at some of the settings okay i'll read it for you i could hear the sound of water droplets dancing on the roof as i glanced about the lit streets in the window the endless rain was pouring down and splashing into the large puddles that now filled the road outside my grandparents' home. I thought to myself, this rain is endless. 
which made me feel restless. I really liked playing outside in their big backyard, climbing the huge oak tree with my younger brother. I thought, as there's nothing to do, I might as well read on of my of a grandfather's book. Now let us think of the settings here. Where are the settings? I'll give you some time to think about it. Okay. Very good. Water droplets. Water droplets is what refer to the weather. And let's treat the time. Grandparent home is the place. Very good, guys. You are doing very well. Restless, feeling, hobbies, liked playing outside is what? Hobbies, very good. Climbing, also hobbies. My younger brother is what? Is a role. So as you see here, these are some of the elements of the prose and the settings. Thank you for your hearing and see you again.